Hi, I'm Thomas from Neonius. In this short video, I will show you how you can easily get great results with the Neonius One microcontroller board. We start by powering up the microcontroller. We can now connect to the microcontroller's Wi-Fi. You can find the password on the back of the packaging. We can now go to neonews.1, which points to the microcontroller. What you see here is a preloaded example program written in JavaScript. As you can see, when I press the left button, the red light turns on. When I press the right button, the green light turns on. With a click on this link, we can open the IDE, which is integrated on the board. In the IDE, we can change different settings, for example, we can change the network interfaces and connect to a different network. We also have a list of all files on the microcontroller. We can view them and edit them. We have statistics showing CPU, network, memory or storage. We have output of the program problems, which means syntax errors. We have uh, debugger, windows, call stack, local breakpoints. Let's set a breakpoint at a line, which is called when we press the button on the microcontroller board. As you can see, the, uh, the debugger breaked right there. We can now step through the program, look at locals and everything. Let's try something more difficult. What I did here is I took a Neonius 1, soldered pins on it, added a sensor. It's an infrared distance sensor. I will now program it to show the sensor output on a website. I connected the Neonius 1 to my local Wi-Fi, so the Neonius 1 has internet access. We will use the internet access to install a module from NPM with which we can do web sockets. Uh, it's a model WS. We can install it with the Neonis One Graphical Package Manager. We now have WS installed, including all dependencies. For this example, we will change the existing example program. We will remove the original text of the website which the example program serves, and we will add the sensor data. We we'll use a large font size so you can see it in the video. In this span, the voltage will be entered. To get the voltage, we will use WebSockets. So we will open a WebSocket to the server on the microcontroller directly when the client browser window is opened. And whenever there's a message coming through the WebSocket, we will show it in the span. So the WebSocket typically has the voltage as message. Now on the server side, we will change the example program so a web so a WebSocket connection um, is accepted. For this we will first require the new module. 
we will then create an object with which we can handle the WebSocket connections. Next, we will listen to the upgrade message of the HTTP server. The upgrade message is uh, the upgrade event is always sent whenever the client wants to upgrade an HTTP connection to a WebSocket connection. Next, we need to know when the WebSocket connection is closed because we will continue to send the sensor data as long as the WebSocket is open. So closed will become, will become true whenever the socket is closed. So we will give the information to the, to the WebSocket module so that the WebSocket module can handle the, the upgrade. When it's upgraded to WebSocket, we will call the function getVoltage, which I'm writing right now, again and again. And this function will, uh, will get the voltage of pin 11 with ADC, analog to digital converter. So in here we now have the voltage of pin 11 where the distance sensor is connected. If the socket is closed, we will not use it anymore. Otherwise, we will send the information. First, we will send error if there was an error, which should not happen. Otherwise, we will send the voltage, the result times 3.3 because the result is between 0 and 1. And we will try to format it a bit here. So we will convert it to a string and take the first three characters, which is a simple formatting. And after we send the voltage, we will call get voltage again in 100 milliseconds so that we don't take all the CPU. We can now open the program's website. And as you can see, the voltage of the sensor is displayed and updated in real time. For more information or purchase of the Neonius One board, please go to www.neonius.com. Thank you for watching.